Hello everyone, I'm Cole Kirchmeyer and I'm currently a sophomore at Saraton Area High School. I was born 16 years ago in a quaint little country called Canada, which is also highly stereotyped. I would like to start off with a thought tonight. I'm sure everyone in this room can think of the stereotypes about Chinese culture and Chinese people in general. I'm almost positive that everyone in this room can think of stereotypes about Americans and American culture. But we tend to laugh it off and almost embrace it because we know that typically these stereotypes aren't always accurate. <coughs> but do you ever think of where we get these? Or do you ever think of where, I mean, do, you ever, do we ever think of where these stereotypes come from for Chinese stereotypes or where we I'm sorry, I'm messing up that one. Do you ever think of where, of how accurate the stereotypes of Chinese people are? I've realized through this project that the media plays a big role in what we think about when it comes to China and Chinese culture. I know a huge media outlet that has really influenced my perceptions is YouTube. YouTube is just full of people making videos about Chinese stereotypes and Chinese cultures in order to make people laugh. Whether it's a stereotype that all Chinese people look the same, or that they're all geniuses, or that they're all bad drivers, or all eat rice. The Disney movie Mulan, talked about previously, also influenced my perceptions of Chinese, China and Chinese culture. I'm sure it, influ it influenced my perceptions and it influenced many other people's perceptions and everyone that watch it, children, because it's a Disney, Disney movie. Mulan showed men over women as a really common theme in that movie and I really took that away from that movie. My perceptions of Chinese culture and people have definitely changed for the better due to the past five months of this amazing project. Through the blog posts we've been making, and the chats on QQ, which said before is the Chinese version of Facebook, I've come to the conclusion that Chinese students aren't as different as we had previously thought. And the idea that they all like the same things we do, such as music. They talk about some of the same music we do, like we listen to. I know one student talked about Kanye. I like Kanye. And the language. They also use slangs that we use here in America, which I would have never thought they would have used because obviously they live in China. And a little side note, they are very, very good at speaking English, which I was really surprised to hear. And again, TV shows. They watch and are interested in the same TV shows, such as House of Cards. And again, colleges, like we're all looking at right now, uh, they're all interested in, not all of them, but I know one particular is really interested in American colleges, and he's thinking of going to American college here. And that was interesting to me because all of us here are doing the exact same thing. And again, food. Food is a common trend on our QQ chats. We like to send pictures of our food to each other. And although rice is very common in most of their meals, is not the only thing they eat, and uh, often they have more variety than us. Now that I've recognized stereotypes, it is my job to combat them, and it is all of our jobs to combat them through this project. Now that I've experienced Chinese culture through talking to the Chinese students, I can now inform others about China and how Chinese people really are. And I can try to make people not stereotype and not prejudice because often stereotyping leads to prejudice. And I'm very glad that I got involved with this project because I can now that because I now have skills and knowledge to take with me to my future. Skills such as time management and communication and accepting others' ideas and planning. That planning obviously goes along with time management. With time management, working on all our museum pieces, we really got down to the crunch of time, I feel like, and we all really needed to manage our time and 
work well and I plan to use that in the future because I've never really had that uh, much stress. And uh, <laughs> communication. I, I want to try to be as cultural as I can. That's why I got involved with this project. And through communicating with Chinese students in China, I uh, plan to try to talk to people all over the world in my future. It was really interesting to see all the culture, cult, see all the culture from all the Chinese students. And accepting others' ideas is a really common theme that I got from this project. <coughs> I really got to listen and really hear what other people had to say. And as a 16-year-old naive teenager, you really don't think about how about other people's ideals and what they think of. And through this project, I really got to hear not only from the Chinese students, from, but from all of us, what people think about. And I really hope to apply that in my future. And expressing yourself. Obviously, through all our art, but through our small group meetings, I really learned to express myself and I hope to use that in the future. And through learning about stereotypes, I plan to teach people not to prejudice and not to stereotype in my future. And obviously, like everyone has said, the ending goal of this entire project is to go to China. I was also involved in the college course of Mandarin Chinese at my school. And getting to learn that language, I feel would not be as beneficial it could to, as it could to be, as it could be to me if I didn't go to China. All this buildup and all this talk that we've done for the last five months wouldn't be worth it if I didn't get to go to China and really experience it for myself and really be immersed in not only the culture but the language. Because, like I said, I took that course. <laughs> And now, I look back at the past five months with this amazing group of teenagers here and in China, talking, talk, taking part in this eye-opening and life-changing project. Through the media, I remember brainstorming stereotypes and where we get them on the very first day that we all met together. I've witnessed how perceptions, I've, I've, I've witnessed how our perceptions of Chinese culture and stereotypes have changed. I've experienced all the ways that we've begun to combat stereotypes and prejudice in the media. This project has definitely left me, and I'm sure everyone in, that was involved with the project, with skills and knowledge that we will carry on with us for the rest of our lives. And I hope that we can all work to rid the world of stereotypes. And the chance to actually go to China would be a dream come true for me and for everyone else involved in this project. And now I would like to leave you with a quote from the one and only Pearl S. Buck that I feel really goes well with this whole project. It is, nothing and no one can destroy the Chinese people. They are relentless survivors. Thank you very much, Erica Sands, and for everyone coming tonight and seeing our projects. I'm really thankful for that. And uh, I hope you enjoyed my speech. And if not, I hope you enjoyed your nap. <laughs>